Hey everybody, I just wanted to do a quick video on the anode heel effect because I feel like this one is um, sometimes a struggle for students and it's really not as complicated as we're making it out to be. All right, the basic terminology for anode heel effect simply means as your x-ray beam comes out of the tube, out of the window, one side is more intense than the other. And you all know that it's a divergent beam, right? So think of a triangle. One side of the triangle is more powerful than the other side. Okay, so you might see the terminology is a variance or a difference in intensity from the cathode side of the beam to the anode side of the beam. And what that means is that the cathode side, the side that comes out on the side of the cathode is more intense and can penetrate more than the anode side. Um, and so I'm just gonna move my little picture here because um, Clover Learning, the Rad Tech Bootcamp, uh, that's where this picture is from. They have a great video on their YouTube. I think it's still there. Um, if not, if you have an account, uh, watch their video. It has a great visual of how it comes from the cathode end, runs into the anode, and then exits out the tube. And it's just going to be higher intensity on the cathode side than the anode side. Why? Because the anode is not flat. It sits at an angle. And the beam that's coming out on the cathode side can come straight out with nothing in its way. The beam coming out the anode side has to get around the heel or this corner piece here of the anode. And you've probably heard the term fat cat, if you haven't. Um, that just means put the thicker part of the anatomy under the cathode. So what is the thicker, more dense part? And that should go on the cathode side of the beam. Okay. These were just some images that I, um, some I drew, <laughs> some I found online, but the degree of angle on the anode will also change your anode heel effect. It'll either increase or decrease it. The first thing that I want us to understand is that when you decrease anode angle, so this one is a 12 degree, it's a smaller anode angle, it's steeper. So your anode that's at an angle, when it's a smaller degree, it's steeper, it's more upright. A larger anode angle like this one over here kicks it back more and opens up this area here. By decreasing anode angle, so the smaller degree, we are increasing the anode heel effect. Why? Because the heel is more in the way. This is going to cause more um, loss of intensity on the anode side than the other one. An increase in anode angle, bigger anode angle, less heel in the way. So decrease anode angle, smaller, increase your anode heel effect. Okay, so in this picture here, um, down on the corner, see the bigger angle pushes it back farther and we can have a wider beam. The smaller the anode angle, the tighter it is, the more it's gonna steal here. Okay, so where that heel is or the edge of the anode is gonna steal a little bit. So this image here is also from Clover Learning, just to give you a better idea of um, anode degrees. So you can see the one with the degree of six versus the one of 20. And that's what I mean by increase, decrease is the size of the angle. But so the anode heel effect will either decrease or increase with the degree of angle. It will increase or de decrease with the SID and field size. So all of these factors can um, either increase or decrease our um, anode heel effect or change the effect. Oops, sorry, jumped ahead there. Um, so if you decrease your anode angle, we've already talked about that, you're gonna increase your anode heel effect. A decrease in SID, so coming closer to the part will increase the anode heel effect. It is not as present at 72 inches as it is at 40. And then field size. The larger the field size, the larger the anode heel effect. Think wider beam, wider light field, more is going to get stolen from that anode. And so I want us to not make this concept wildly difficult. Let's um, just understand the definition of it, what it is, and what affects it. 
And how do we use it to our advantage? When it gives you an example of a part that's thicker on one side and thinner on the other, the thicker, more dense part of the anatomy goes under the cathode end, which is why if they give you abdomen, the pelvis end of the abdomen is more dense. It has the entire pelvis versus the upper abdomen, which doesn't have as much bony area as the bottom. If it's a femur, the hip end is thicker than the knee end. You would put the thicker, denser parts under the cathode part of the beam. So I hope that um, made this concept a little bit more um, easier to understand. And again, go basic. Let's figure out what controls it. Um, you know, if you have the Clover Learning, the Rad Tech Bootcamp, I would go on and watch their videos. They have great visuals of this to make this a little easier for those that are visual learners. Okay, so um, I am going to um, stop my recording and I'll meet you back here. I'm going to do a quick one on line focus principle as well. Okay.